Hi everyone, my name is Abigail Oren and I, along with Ada Barlat, um, am a co-creator of Dev and Think for Historians, a set of online courses that walks you through the key features of Dev and Think, um, which is a powerful database software that can be used for historical research. And we show uh, tips and tricks and scripts that can help you uh, save time while doing your research. So recently I previewed that I'm working on a new research project and um, I decided that it might be helpful to show all of you viewers um, my new database and how I'm setting it up um, and uh, the organization of my groups and the use of tags and the little tricks I've implemented to stay organized and be able to easily find uh, my documents when I'm ready to read or write from them. Uh, but before I really dive into that. I thought it would be helpful if I shared with you the origin story of this project um, and introduced you to some of the characters. Um, I think having a little bit of insight into the story will clarify why I've made certain decisions in building my new database. Before I do that though, um, I just want to say I'm taking a little bit of a risk by, um, at this very early stage, putting this research on the internet. Um, so I just ask um, nobody steal my work and uh, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, so I guess uh, with that said, let's uh, get right into the story. This painting has hung in my parents' dining room for as long as I can remember. And forever, really, I paid it no attention. It was the backdrop to my life. But in February 2020, I was home and I asked my mom, where the hell did it come from? She told me the artist's name was Abraham Mark Dots, a painter who married her father's half-sister, Lillian, who went by Lessie. You can see Lessie in the bottom left corner of this family photograph. My curiosity peaked. I started Googling Dots and found that his work was in the collections of some pretty significant museums. I started doing some genealogical research on Dots and Lessie. In the 1920 census, I found Lessie living with her older sister, Rose, the second of my grandfather's half-sisters. The census was how I learned that Rose was married to Harry Goodleman. Returning to this photo, Harry is in the center and Rosie is on the right. When I asked my mom about Harry, she told me that he was a Yiddish poet and she had one of his books at home. This version was archived by the Yiddish Book Center. The illustrations, as well as the general graphic design, were done by Harry's older brother, Aaron Goodleman. Aaron Goodleman did the graphic design for many books, including the covers for several books by the poet Malka Lee, but he was best known as a sculptor, and his work has also been widely collected. His sculptures often celebrated the working class and protested against oppression. So I wasn't surprised when Aaron, Harry, and Dots all showed up as members of the Communist Party. Indeed, it turns out that Aaron Guttelman and Mark Dots were part of a group of artists who were politically and artistically radical to varying degrees. In 1932, their primary gallery showed their work alongside artists like Marc Chagall, David Berliuk, Harold Weston, Jose Clemente Orozco, John Lonergan, Joseph De Martini, Maurice Becker, and other well-known artists of the mid-20th century. So what exactly am I researching? As of now, I'm not entirely sure. I'm exploring the connections between these artists, uh, not to make any particular intervention into art history or political history. Rather, I'm curious about how uh, these artists' experiences as um, immigrants really guided their artistic and political expression, particularly during and after the Holocaust. Um, but mostly right now, I'm approaching this from a more biographical rather than historiographical angle. Um, I'm less concerned with making an argument and more invested in finding and telling a good story. 
So in that vein, um, I hope you enjoyed learning the backstory of the project and hearing about Dots and the Goodelmans. Um, there actually is another Goodelman sibling, Israel Goodelman, um, that I'm also interested in writing about. So maybe we'll talk about him in a future video. So as I mentioned in the next video, we will go back to Dev and Think and I will show you the schema or group hierarchy that I've begun implementing in my database. I'm, I'm calling it the dots database. Um, and in future videos, I'll also discuss like file naming conventions, tagging, some note-taking strategies, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm kind of um, doing at that moment to really get the database optimized for, for when I eventually start writing. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope you'll come back for upcoming videos in this series. Um, and also make sure to check out past videos we've done um, that kind of offer tips and tricks for um, historians and qualitative researchers, um, mostly about Dev and Think, but we've looked at some other tools too. All right, well, hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.